Um, maybe some business first. Chris, are you expecting anything in the way of lineup changes or any new bodies coming in? No, we're not expecting any changes. Everyone's doing pretty well, and um, Stu will be our starting goalie. Um, the power play, as you guys have had an opportunity to look at it here, um, I don't expect you to talk too much about tactics, but is there something that uh, was missing or that you can do a better job of, you think, to get a better result? Um, you know, I think missed um, missed opportunities, missing the nets, just making sure that when we do have that opportunity, um, they know what we want to do and they know our setup and where we score our goals. They're going to try and take that away, but we had to move the puck around well to create some chances, some looks, and when we do get that opportunity, then we make sure we hit the net and we uh, shoot shooting with a purpose. Um, Brock Besser will not play tonight. Does that change anything on your side of things, uh, not having him in the lineup for them? Uh, just that we need to um, not let down, not uh, take a step back, and things going to be easy. Um, I've seen this many times before where a team is missing a key player and how everyone steps up their game. And everyone just steps up a little bit, and it is a very um, a strong team performance. Uh, you know, for a short term, it's, it's, it's a very powerful thing for a team. Long term, obviously, you don't like to lose your player, uh, a skilled player, or one of your top players for a long period of time. But um, for our strategy, um, we have to play how the Edmonton Oilers want to play hockey. Um, and we need to be our, at our best tonight. Does that message easier to get across when you've seen it happen with Matthews, with Marshawn in, Buff, in, in, in Boston? And, and like it's, it's happened for us. You can tell that they, you know, that that's what the message is, is that these guys are going to rally around Brock not being in their lineup. Absolutely. And, um, you know, we're not going to talk too much about their um, state of mind and how they're going to rally together. We're, we're going to be talking about what we need to do and the key points on what we need to do to be successful. You know, when you get to this point, you play the same team six nights in a, you know, 12 days or whatever it is, uh, is there still a lot of you know, strategy? Is there still a lot of X's and O's for a coaching staff at this point? No, these, is, um, this is a, a, these are player games. This is uh, coaches. We've prepared the players. We've talked about um, what the opposition does, what we need to do. Um, there's very little left for us to intervene, and it's about going out and executing just the um, small details, winning the puck battles, getting pucks out, all those little things. That's what's important. You may have answered it for me. That would be my question. Do you do you say less to your team tonight than you did after you know, or going out onto the ice in February in Philadelphia? Is this a night where you don't have to speak to your team very much? Well, the situation's new for me, and um, I think less would be more, but um, I haven't gone through it. I'm not sure if uh, what I'm going to be like and my message, but I think the players know what they need to do, and I don't think there'll be very much for me to tell them. Chris, what are you looking for out of the first 10 minutes from your team tonight? Um, controlling emotions. Um, you know, the energy is going to be very high. Um, there's going to be a lot of thoughts on the players' minds. And it's going to be important that we just simplify our game and um, get everyone involved and, um, yeah, not looking for that big home run play to start the game. Just everyone contributing just a little bit, chipping away at the uh, Vancouver Canucks and building our best game. The Canucks have had some pushes in the third period and, and won some games that way. Um, you guys really seem to lock it down in the third period and, and – and build on your lead. What did you like about the way you played in the in the last twenty minutes of the last game? I think it was a lot like we played in the first and second. Um, did a lot of little things well. I think the our puck management, uh, being able to make plays and not always just the safe plays. Safe plays might get you out of that situation, but it compounds into spending a lot of time in the defensive zone. And if you spend a lot of time defending, just you're giving the opposition an opportunity to strike so we just got to make sure that we're pushing and making plays and playing our best hockey Chris to that point you talked about the second period of game five and how maybe you guys were a little too conservative just flipping pucks out and that 
where do you draw the line when the season's on the line between like you said, not trying to make the fancy plays all the time, but keeping your foot on the gas pedal because, you know, it's all or nothing tonight. Yeah, there's a fine line. You, um, you don't want to be threading passes through the through the slot and they get picked up, picked off. Um, I think the biggest thing is for you to make those plays. It's not necessarily on the puck carriers. Um, his responsibility is more the everybody else that are supporting him. One, are they talking to him, helping him, giving him some information on what he should be doing with the puck? And, you know, are everyone getting available so he can make that play? And if everyone around him is not supporting him, often his only play is to flip it out of the zone or go off the glass. And, you know, it's a safe play, and sometimes that is the play. But, you know, it's those, usually those four other guys on the ice um, that need to be supporting him. Good morning, Chris. Uh, we just talked to Connor McDavid and Matthias Ekholm about the starting of games, especially in this building. Uh, Connor said he's really liked the starts you guys have had here, but what do you think are the reasons for the dips that we've seen in the execution of the game plan, and how do you plan on combating that tonight? Well, a lot of it's um, the dips. Uh, you have to give the uh, Vancouver Canucks a lot of uh, credit because they are a good hockey team. They they did win this division, and... Um, They've got some good players. And for us to say that we're going to come out here and dictate how the game's going to be played for 60 minutes, I think is um, kind of naive. I don't think that's uh, possible. But it's going to be a lot of just stick to our game plans and execute plays. And it's not that we're going to change it after the second period to say, okay, now we're going to combat it and we're going to do this differently. It's We're, we're going to play our game. We saw Sam Carrick draw into the lineup in Game 6. Just a quick comment on his play and what you liked out of number 39 in Game 6. You know, for a guy that hadn't played for about two weeks, um, two-plus, not an easy situation to come into a lineup uh, in an elimination game. And, um, you know, I thought he played really solid, um, controlled the puck down low, created some turnovers on the forecheck, won us some key face-offs in the defensive zone, and, um, you know, this physicality is always important in the playoff series. So, you know, he brought a lot to the table. In that same vein, Chris, you have Corey Perry, who's got more Game 7 playoff experience than anyone on either team. Can you draw on him to help, can he help you out in that regard, even though he's not playing? I'm certain the players will look at him for um, some stability, some confidence. Um, you know, Corey's been an outstanding addition to our team, not only on the ice, but probably even more important, off the ice, given his leadership um, to the team. And we've got some really good leaders on our team. But, you know, for a guy that's won a Stanley Cup and been to the Stanley Cup Finals numerous times, you know, Corey's spoken up many times this year, and the team has listened. So I think Corey's been a, a very valuable resource for us.